The first scientist who is going to talk about experimental research in quantum computing is Dr. Mark Buitelar, who works at the LCN, the London Centre for Nanotechnology. So what kind of qubits do we use in our research? We use the electron spin as a natural quantum two-level system. And we managed to look at individual electron spins by putting them in a, a very small box, so-called quantum dots, where we use the charge of the electron to manipulate the electrons, putting them in and out of the box, putting two boxes of two electrons next to each other and, and, and have them interact. And we define our quantum dots in so-called carbon nanotubes, which are uh, one-dimensional systems of only about a nanometer in diameter, but they can be um, millimeters long to, to confine the electrons and the electron spins. Mm -hmm. What are the advantages and disadvantages of the qubits and the materials that we use? So an important um, parameter for, for spin qubits, for, for any qubit, is the coherence time. A major source of decoherence for spin qubits is um, hyperfine interaction with nuclear spins. And certain materials, such as carbon and silicon, can be made isotopically pure, and you can get rid of those interactions. That's why carbon nanotubes are an interesting system, because they can be made isotopically pure, you can have carbon-12 uh, entirely, and spin coherence times are expected to be very long um, in this material. That's what we are trying to, to establish experimentally. A disadvantage, of course, of, of a carbon nanotube is that it's one-dimensional. In one way, it's an advantage. It provides a natural confinement to the electron spins in, in one dimension, but it, it restricts the space in which you can operate, the physical space in which you can operate. And you have to find innovative ways to couple uh, many qubits. So, how do we make our qubits? The qubits are defined um, in carbon nanotubes, and the carbon nanotubes are grown in, in a furnace or on a substrate. So, let's say this is my carbon nanotube. And we locate these carbon nanotubes using an atomic force microscope and then we go into our LCN clean room to define quantum dots within this nanotube using electron beam lithography and metal reparation. So for example, we define two electrodes here such that you can be, we can define a quantum dot in this section here in the middle. And we can have other so-called gate electrodes we use to apply electric fields to draw in electrons in this quantum dot one by one. And each of these electrons has a spin, which can be up or down, and these are qubits. And we can extend this to having more quantum dots um, in series. And each of these sections um, constitutes a qubit. And we can controllably couple them, um, for example, using exchange interaction. The, the, the magnitude of which we can control with these electrodes here in the middle. And we can repeat that trick. So we've got many, many, many um, qubits um, in series. Of course, the disadvantage here is that we've got only one dimension to work in, since it's a one-dimensional system. So when do we expect to see the first universal quantum computer? Well, that's a very difficult question to answer, but I, what I can say is that progress at the moment is very fast. The field is developing in a pace I haven't seen before. So my best guess, and it's really not more than a guess, would be 15 to 20 years from now. If I had a quantum computer right now, what would we do with it? Yeah, good question. Um, there are a, a number of algorithms out there for which it's been shown that a quantum computer can outperform a classical computer, a sure, robust algorithm, and factorizing a large number into its prime components. These are our applications. I think what I, what I can say is that um, only a quantum computer um, is sufficient in, in simulating um, other quantum systems, and large quantum systems, and I think that might be um, where applications will be found that have the most profound impact. For example, looking at how molecules interact um, on the molecular level and individual atoms, um, and this might be useful, for example. Um, in, in medicine and other fields.